Welcome. You are listening to a Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry K. Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. This episode is cross-referenced as Chapter 3, Demons of the Burning Night, Part 12. We're also on YouTube, Podbean and Twitch, where you can find the various links, as well as an index of some of the main points of each episode, in the description. Craig, Shana's player, has had to take a break due to ill health, so we wish him a speedy recovery and hope to see him back soon. To bolster the party, Casper joins us from Stuart's Saturday game to play the warrior, Victor. To briefly catch you up, after negotiating a deal with the pirates, the party plan their approach to Terek Nev before setting out towards the demon and ghost-infested ruins of the ancient city. The task of you exploring sort of a huge city you know, that could take years of gameplay if, if we were to do this realistically. You'd have to get an overview of the, of the city. So what um, Aroth can tell you is that there is kind of a central temple district which is walled off. The whole city is an island. Kind of on the right-hand side, there seems to be um, a collection of smaller islands, all of which are walled. If I show you the map very quickly, and what I'm going to do is produce a much sort of simpler version for the sake of the Obsidian Portal. So this is up for a few seconds just to give you kind of a, an overview. So there's a collection of islands on the right hand side, all of which are walled in and collected with a few structures which are still standing. There's kind of a temple complex in the city. Um, on the left-hand side towards the west, there are some docks. And that's where they went to because they were hoping to find a ship. The whole island is kind of in a, in a large lake. Um, uh, and they were hoping to find a ship, but they didn't get that far. Um, they believe, from what they could see, that up in sort of the northwestern corner is what's left of the temple and maybe a palace they think there was a palace here at some point unlike you they didn't do much reading or research or anything like that um across to kind of the north sorry the northeast there looks to be some sort of aquatic arena like um almost man-made there's a rocky outcrop which is attached to the island via a, a bridge um and it looks like there's some sort of a reef there um but the only way in is from the south through this gate the whole city is walled off with this giant red wall and attached at regular intervals around the red even that bit that goes around the islands to the east are gargoyles and statues which fire fire bolts at you anyway what I'll do is I'll produce a simpler version of the map for you for the Obsidian Portal to help you plan where you explore. Thank you. And from the readings we did prior to this, do we know the locations that we're, or the location we're looking for? No. Um, you haven't really had much time or spent time doing any research on Tarek Nev, Aaron Moore, or the um, Portal Rods at all. All Silk can tell you from her very quick reading and questioning is the portal rod are quite powerful artifacts that can warp time and also can open and control other portals and if you remember <gasps> the manipulation of time thing that you want to help free the seer because she's held in some sort of stasis and if you just release her by killing the demon she will age and die whereas mm -hmm using the portal rod might um not freeze her but freeze her so that you can bring her back to life as it were and she carries on living from where she is now so to speak that that's very very poorly described um so you know the portal rods can walk time you know they can be used to force open and force close any portal um now that puts you if you remember at odds with mab you remember that Queen Mab, and it's a gift of the Fae, and particularly her, any portal, summoning circle or anything like that, operates at the permission, if you like, of Queen Mab. 
and if you can recall she's absolutely furious about the loss of something called the heart of a goth mm -hmm. and she's closed virtually all of the portals um that would normally be open so if you remember you come across summoning circles that don't quite work you've come across mirrors which are frosted over and don't work and that's sort of yeah mm. so if you find these port if these rods um again you're gonna have to be careful how you use them because if you misuse them and go around frayed silk opening up any portal you want and hop you could get mad pretty pissed off the, mm. these books of the neuretti um when we were skimming yeah. them do they cover the period and, and mention any me uh mention of Tarek Nev? yes they do I mean, you can spend an evening with Aaron if you want and skim through it. So you can distribute the books you've got. And with the aid of all of you, apart from Cran, um, I don't know if Numel is particularly literate as an aquatic elf, but uh, I certainly know Cran isn't. Um, I think you'd rather eat pee um, and arm wrestle than read books. Fucking <laughs> um, horrible. Yeah. Uh, so. Reading through them, you know the Noretti are fairly peaceful folk. And then a queen arose from somewhere, a woman called uh, Vrama Ven. She arose. So the legends go, she was found sleeping beneath the volcano. And she and her father came to live on Noretti um long lived um obviously um magically long lived um her presence among the lifted them up from their rather pastoral simple life uh, such that the Noretti splintered into a pastoral peaceful folk who wanted to cling to their old ways of sheep uh, goats and um, extensive Friday nights nipping jump, uh, knitting jumpers. And another group of folk who wanted to build a city, raise temples, and they began worshipping uh, the darker versions of the Nureti gods. The Nureti gods have always been quite harsh, if you like, a little bit like, um, oh, I suppose an equivalent between, would be between uh, Etruscan worship and the Roman worship, one of the first thing the Roman people did was to pretty much crush and remove any Etruscan influence, religious influence. Um, you know, the Etruscans used, were, were the founders of the, you know, rip open a goat, look at its entrails, and you can see whether Arsenal will win on Saturday. That's Just um, like Arsenal fans. Are... Uh, <laughs> harsh, but possibly true. And I say that as an Arsenal fan. Opening... opening <laughs> Guinea pigs would help beat Tottenham. I probably sorry, just that. like Spurs fans. Sorry, I got that wrong. Yeah. Um, oh no, no, we're far more <laughs> civilized than them. Um, anyway, so the Noretti basically split into two. You've got the urban city folk who built the city of Tarak Ne. They really went full throttle with worshiping the dark aspects of the Noretti god, um, all led by their queen Vrama there and her father. Rama there and her father were clearly not Nureti born. They were some other people. What the hell they were doing on the island is a mystery. Anyway, um, over time, the Nureti became a considerable threat to the rest of the lands around Aaron. Their dark gods were very, very bad indeed. Rama there was a really, really strong uh, spellcaster. You suspect, probably Silk would be aware of this, you suspect that Vramavair was probably under the influence of the unlife, you know, this dark evil entity mm -hmm. that everything, um, such that in the end, what you've ascertained more done at the temple, there's a great coalition of peoples went to Aaron Moore to crush and remove the Noretti. To do so, however, they would have to get rid and destroy the dark gods of the Noretti. So that would clearly have involved um, forces of light. Uh, you know that these rare and exotic people, the Amarishi, 
were at the forefront of the fight. If you can recall, you saw all these angelic images of great winged beings with powerful weapons. You rescued some yourself. You've got two swords and a war hammer. So the Amorishi were at the forefront of this fight against the Dark Naret. And of course, for I think it's probably for thousands of years, Tarek Nev has been left as a ruin. Right. Left alone, the island shunned, and so on. Now you're proposing to go into this shunned ruined city. The Nereti are all dead. You assume Vramavere and her father and all generals and mercenaries are dead as well. And you're going to start trying to uncover maybe some of Vramavere's secrets. Amongst these are these things called the portal rods. Now that would be um, Ugnan's kind of, when he's skimming through these, is looking for any references to um, time manipulation, anything like that, some kind of bits where there's the eternal something or other, anything like that. No, there's no mention of any... So the books that you've got are more about the people, they're not about Tarek Nev. Um, you give me... Oh, there's no luck roll or anything. Um, there won't be, actually. There's no specific mention of the portal rods as such. There are mentions of some people, famous people and so on. Yeah, can't... Yeah, you do come across mention something. The helm... Sorry, which, sure. you cut out there. The helm of Kadena. You do come across mention of the helm, which was a powerful artifact um, present somewhere in Ta in Tarek Nev, used, you think, by either Vramavere or one of her generals, okay? Now, mm -hmm. if you know your shadow world law, Kadena should be known to you all. You know, she was, you know, sort of the, the queen of all the baddies. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, we are sagely not knowing that at all. So... Go back to the first age and beyond. Basically, there was a great sundering between the most powerful people that have ever been. Kadena one led one group, um, and there were good people on the other side. Kadena was defeated um, and destroyed, as far as you're aware. The other side kind of left behind some survivors, and these people were more than men. More and they left behind various watches. Um, from these people would become the law masters, you know, the mightiest of the mighty on Kalthea. Right. Um, so Kadena and her ilk are about the most powerful peoples that have ever lived on Kalthea. Anyway, Kadena's helm, which is a powerful artifact, is in Tarek Nev somewhere. Now, it will have, obviously, some horrible properties, probably. Okay. Um, let me see if I can give you any more details. So, yeah, is, Jill, is Kadena linked to the uh, the um, life, or is that a different evil faction? Uh, I'm just trying to remember my shadow law and knowledge. That's oh, okay. Kadena served the unlife, so basically, the unlife's greatest champion and greatest hero. Um, Silk, I think, will correct me if I've got wrong. Silk knows this pretty well, so yeah, so it's. Basically, in the second era, you're now in the that Tarek Nev was kind of destroyed. Yep. And you're now in the third era. So it's been thousands of years since uh, Brahma there um, and her people were around. And you've now city to get these portal rods. Um, portal rods are very, very powerful. Again, probably skimming through these. Vramavere wasn't a was a powerful magician, but it was her father who was a creator. It was her father who was an alchemist uh, who invented machines and devices. So, if Vramavere's father has a workshop or um, a palace of his own in Tarek Nev, that's where you're likely, or you'll find the portal rods themselves. But that's about all I can tell you, I'm afraid. So I can give you more on Dina from the yep. Wise Guide to Shadow World if you want. Um, yeah, go ahead. Just looking up. Uther was the first of his kind, the masters of the flows. Power was in their hands and the shaping of the lands was for them an easy task. 
The world was yet young and warm and red hot rot that ran like rivers across the steppes. Uther and his peoples were wise and sought to temper the wild earth and still her uneasiness. But there were those among the masters led by a woman, Kadena, K-A-D-A-E, combined letter, uh, which literally translates as the slayer who sought to disrupt their ways and there arose a great conflict. This was the first era. So she is, this, that's written by Lidek Tirisinen, who is very famous um, law master. So that she was the slayer. She basically fought the gods. <laughs> so not a weak woman at all, I suspect. These fragmented mm-hmm. tales are the only certain information if they are even that available from the first era. The annals of the era recall that the Lords of Essence and the conflicts which arose between them over the forming of the world. Definitive knowledge of the events of the first era is scant, or actually scanty, but I'm sure that's a mistype, as they are nearly no records. They were most likely destroyed in the final cataclysm and that people which set the lands in the shapes which supposedly have changed little since. It is yeah. believed that the Lords of Essence were as men in their natural form, but were able to assume any shape they desired at will, for they held awesome powers over the essence. Da, 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 da. After thousands of years, Kadena and her followers developed the power to shape the land, and they began to modify their, their environment as they saw fit. It was not long before this came to the attention of Uther, for Kadena's idea of a fit environment was a land tortured by earthquakes and cut by rivers of lava. After many years of unsuccessfully attempting to control Kadena's whimsical destruction indirectly, Uther decided the only way that the world would survive was through the death of Kadena and the obliteration of her order. Thus it was the two met, each with the strongest of their kind. The ensuing struggle was one that shook the world to its core. Continents sank, lands long under the seas were thrust up again, entire races were destroyed. Wow, we've just heard about one of those. Um, by flames and tidal waves. It is said that the battle lasted for an entire year. At the end, when the great smokes and plumes of steam began to clear, every man and woman of each order was slain. Thus ended the first era. And okay. whose who's hourglass do we own? The hourglass of the Slayer. Ah, uh, yeah. it is hers then. Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope she's Grant's not undead. feeling even more out of his depth than he did before. Didn't even know you could read. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so so had, all of a sudden, Cram comes out of his trance and said, sorry, did I say something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard it in a pub somewhere. Yeah, Ruse is plus 50 was, uh, spectacles of wisdom. <laughs> it's not right. common knowledge. So, problem. <laughs> it is now. We've got nothing still to go on. We don't. We've got a whole city of search then, just to looking for these bloody rods. Yeah. So, according to Aroth, then the only way in is through the red gate. It is the red uh, gate on the map where I'm highlighting now, Steve, right down the south. Like two yeah. big bastions. Yeah, I, yeah, I've right. closed my version of. Okay. And so we can't we can't approach it by water because the red wall circumvents the entire. Uh, you can you the city. can go around the city, um, but the wall goes all the way around. Well, my thought was maybe you go high, high up in the center of the city, and then just descend directly down. Then you probably gonna be out of the range of. I would have thought. I mean, it, it, I can see here the the scale on the map, which you, we probably wouldn't be wouldn't actually know, I suppose, at the time. It's five hundred feet, and a firebolt spell is about two hundred if they're really, really um souped up. So you'd be out of range of all all walls. Steve, you think you're using team. carpet? Well, I think the ship, the actual flying ship. Oh, the ship. Yeah. We could just but, like abseil down into the middle of it like a SWAT team all dressed in black. Yeah. <laughs> Going, ha, 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 ha. But no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I presume yeah. we wouldn't know any of that because we, we probably... Do we, no, we, mean, do we even have a map uh, of the city? No, but you could... I mean, you can certainly get the feel that it's huge. It is a city. Um, you've been told these things are shooting firebolt. Silk could advise you that, well, look, a range of firebolt. Hell, that's not the centre of the city, is it? So maybe you, it's not, un, you know, it's not, it's not beyond the realms of your, look, could actually direct ship to get us in. However, you, you have, have risk the airship uh, flying over. It. Yeah. However, yeah. as far as you can see, you've got a perfectly valid um, password that gets you in. I have to request something, you guys, too. I, I can't trust myself when we approach this gate. I. I, I'll need to be bound and and 
Fucking hell, something bad happened to you, Silk. Now, remember, you've still got, I think you left, though, didn't you? You left those books that would allow you to summon demons or give you the ability to start summoning demons. You left those in that locked chest, didn't you? Uh, uh, yes. I thought we took, oh, no, yeah, those books, yeah, yeah. All right, because those books, I think, for you would be a particularly large temptation. <laughs> oh, exactly. Besides, I can already do that stuff, so. <laughs> she should have said out that. Of game. She said Whoops. that. Of game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but no so, worries about my background. It's all out of game. So you've got a feeling for the size of the city, not a town. You got a feeling that the Nareti were actually quite advanced and quite a dangerous race of people. You also know that they worshipped dark gods that were quote unquote destroyed. Um, some of you will be aware, probably more silk. Sorry to pick on you, silk game. Oh, no. as well as somebody who's quite arcanely, magically wise, um, that destroying gods is not as easy as it seems. Mm. Um, oh, we thought it was a walk in the park. So, and it's not <laughs> so much that you need a lot of power to do, but mm, you know, it's it's almost impossible to destroy gods. Prison, banish. You can trap a god, but actually destroying a god is very, very difficult indeed. Bloody god's egg timer can destroy everyone in a five-bar radius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crikey. Um, you know that once you go into the city, Ar and Porg know as well, that there are demons are just things that leap out with teeth and claws and try and kill you. These things are quite clever, quite insidious, and will trick lure fool and try and mislead you and that's probably the biggest danger that you face and my main worry really because you know it's you a face. big city and i just thought that even if we were fighting our way we'd be killed by attrition but the longer we spend in there the more chance we're likely to um you know succumb to it and out of game fail some kind of roles and end up doing something stupid we're not supposed to do i yeah, love us I to think... actually know where we're actually going to go and just try and head for that objective as soon as we can get frig out of there yeah do yeah. we have anything to help us avoid i guess the incredibly powerful illusions of all of these things being created in the city are or see through them or i think the horn of um valhalla will help well at least some of us potentially uh but it's not a i think panacea Ar i mean you can talk to aroth paul no um won't help too much they suspect he's well you know he's more intelligent than his captain. Um, Aroth is keen to impress on you that really to trust to your common sense and just be careful, really, really careful. If it, and he uses the phrase, um, if it smells like duck soup and it looks like duck soup and it tastes like duck soup, it is duck soup. Um, so you have to be quite cautious and careful with what you see. Um, as Ugnan pointed out, Aroth will probably also advise, but you know, if you go around, you'll get slaughtered. Go in with an aim, go in with a plan, use your common sense, be really, really careful. Again, he looks at your weapons and says, you yeah, know, those are nice blades. I like those. And he looks at the big two handed sword that you can save Cran, and obviously can't help but notice that. The remorse, the scimitar, uh, sorry, the scythe that you've got is a very unusual weapon, and he notices that as well. And then he reminds you, Cran, that so uh, you said something about trading some of these blades, then, and he looks at the two handed sword. What about I said that a, one? a blade, uh, and I actually said a two handed sword, but it isn't this one. Um, I do have one back on the sky ship that I think will really take your fancy. Big guy like you, only a big guy, strong guy like you look like he could handle it, but it's it's got a mercury core. Uh, I swung it, and you would not believe the power you can get out of it. Incredible sword. Magic, is it? Definitely. And shiny. Shiny. Um, <laughs> yeah, he nods. I mean, basically, and, and a ship, and a way off this cursed island is what he's really interested in. So, you know, the blades are as something else as something else yeah he's happy with that um what else do you need to know from him and his crew before you set off 
basically there is a path that you pick up. So there's a canal where, well, when Kadena started the construction of the city, she had many of the Nereti and many of the slaves that they'd acquired dig a huge canal which leads up to the city. And running along the side of the canal is a bridge, or sorry, is a paved road. And that's the way into the city and it leads direct to the gate. So you can't oh, not find the gate. So along there, along that way. I'm just looking at the map now. Yeah, front there. So I'm a little confused. Is the whole island the city or? The whole island that you can see is by. OK, gotcha. And there are. So where does the canal come in? Does it come in from the south? Yeah, the canal is coming in from the south, but it's since been sort of choked and overgrown. So it's not visible on your map. It kind of comes up from the south uh, and then veers off and approaches, um, I think, from uh, the southwest, if memory serves me correct. But that won't be visible on your map or, or on that big map. Right, says Ugnan. Um, I've got some knowledge, some more arcane knowledge. And I think I've studied enough about these rods, though you have to uh, probably correct me here, Stuart, if I don't know enough about them. Um, but I've got ways of uh, locating certain items if I know them well enough. I can find the direction and the distance to anything as long as it's been th as long as it's been three hundred feet. Now I'm looking at um, the the drawings in the dirt we've presumably been doing, and uh, I reckon in the time it will take uh, a couple of spells to uh, run out, I could pretty much canvas that whole city. That's great. So basically, wow. out out of uh, character, it's. Uh, Location three, uh, which is gives the direction and distance to any specific object or place that the caster is familiar with or has described, and this is where the the the, the rub is in detail. That's up to you, Stuart, to decide how much we know about these things. I don't think you know enough. Detail. If you could find a sketch, if you could find a, a description of them, if you could find. Something more about them, yes, I'd allow you to cast a spell, but at the moment, all you know is the name and a vague reference to what they might be able to do, I'm afraid. Fair enough. Sorry. No, fair enough. So, uh, quickly, there's five things that we looked at all our resources um, and chip in if I've missed anything here, um, based on what Bosco, Steve and I discussed offline, that we think would be really helpful to make use of before we go in. Um, so that is... Courage True, from which I can cast once a day from the Horn of Valhalla, um, which basically automatically helps us succeed a fear-based resistance roll, um, which could be extremely useful. Cherry can use um, her kind of deck of cards to cast Dream 2, which will give us, she can go into a dream light sleep and, and kind of give us some decent intel on a potential plan of action, which would be really helpful. Um, the Shield of Faith, if we can charge it up, can cast up to 10 fireball, fire bolts. Now, I'm not sure what fire bolts will do to demons, but whoever's using that, if anyone is, and it may well be Crown initially, charging it up would be very sensible. And the final thing is everyone needs to drink from the Horn of Valhalla before we go in, which gives you plus 50 on your next resistance roll. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I would probably suggest is I cast Courage True before we go in. That will automatically help us save a resistance roll. If we get that used up, then I'll use the drink from the Horn of Valhalla so we don't overlap them, basically. Yeah. Um, and the final one, the fifth one, is the shield breaker sword that I've got, um, which is astonishing. It can cast shock bolt against everyone within 250 feet if they're uh, dark, basically, if they are demon, demonic type things, uh, but only once an hour and only once you unsheath it. So... The plan would be that would be almost like a last resort. Once I've, if we're under serious attack, not just the odd demon here and there, but a bunch of them, I could release that. It would shock out everyone. They also automatically take damage if they're close by, um, and I think they there's fear for them as well. So, um, only caveat to that is the sword may. I need to have a conversation with it, see if it's okay with doing that, and just being left for the important guys uh, because it wants to be used all the time. So those are the resources that we thought that would be extremely helpful 
to use here. And we, we didn't use the things like the weapons that are of demon slaying stuff, which are obviously really reused from the therefore we'll be using those. Is there anything else, any other resources we've got as a party that could help us? I do have a couple of questions for Stuart. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Okay, so the demon hide armor or the vampiric, uh, they considered soft or either of them considered soft leather or are they both rigid leather? Um, gosh, I'm just going to pop back to Demon, Sorry, demon no, hide no. is 89, so I presume that's rigid leather because it's rigid. Well, it acts 12. as 18. Yeah, it says encumbers is 89, but actually protects as 8013. And are you, you sure, Bosco? Rigid. Bosco, are you sure you want to use the vampiric armor? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> considering I'm the one bleeding most of the time. Yeah, yeah, I have read it actually. Even the last it's sentence. It's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll you'll become pretty evil pretty quickly doing that. <laughs> oh, she's so pretty, but she just slipped my throat. <laughs> Which is part of the reason why. Yeah, I like I like I like playing with the balances of fate. But I think it's not again up to Stuart. But that vampiric one that says that protects us eighty nine, but encumbers us eighty six, and I think that is soft leather. Because all well, I've got is soft leather. Yeah, I've got zero in right. any. Uh, I think so. Look, armor type six might be soft leather. Actually, it sounds yeah. about right. It says it's a leather coat. Right, if it's soft leather, let me have a look. Correct me if I'm wrong, Stuart, but I think it's one to four is skin, five yeah. to eight is soft leather, nine to yeah, right. twelve yep. is rigid, yeah. and then thirteen yeah, so to six sixteen. Is soft leather. So any soft leather skill would allow you to use the vampire armor make sure that you've got it set as armor type nine unfortunately the way the rule set works it's not very amenable to adjusting your moving in armor properly but heck we can yeah around that okay so nobody's used it yet and had to roll the rr on it nobody nobody until you joined this session bosco actually even <laughs> mentioned wearing it <laughs> okay so I think if I'm using, see, I'm thinking if I'm using the ring of flying and have that, I can keep out of range of my teammates who might be bleeding and use it to get into range of enemies that might be bleeding. Um, you could do that. It's a rather nasty use of the art you could. Well, everyone knows that Cheryl's not above using any means whatsoever to to succeed or survive um it's just that yeah you know she's pretty i wouldn't call her a good person but i wouldn't call her like it's more a survival thing than a for her like the way she's justifying it to herself okay. is that it's a survival thing right. um if we're in a fight she knows she usually get if she gets hit she'll bleed <laughs> so yeah i think it might be a good thing as long as i remember that i gotta keep away from other people when i'm hurt is that the way it works it's only like where it because it's to sustain me yeah heal at the expense of any other humanoid so only when i'm hurt does it actually trigger yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter whether it's friend or foe no um yeah yeah i get that that's that's why that's why it's evil um okay so yeah well i'm gonna wear it and we'll see what happens when uh okay when it trip okay so just make a note on your character sheet and obviously remind me when you're in when you that the vampire will up. start healing you if it can okay yep Stuart, um, Stuart, I just got to. Yes. I, um, I'm just looking at the Ring of Commotion in Obsidian Portal. Uh, sorry to yes. interrupt your flow. Um, that was updated on March the second, two thousand nineteen, and I'll just remind you guys what it says. A simple-looking ring. The wearer gains the ability to cause another individual to make a commotion. For instance, that very large man in the inn may suddenly leap to his feet and demand that Brexit yeah, was really. the only logical thing to do if England were ever to host a World Cup again. The man will stamp his feet, wave his arms, gestic gesticulating wildly, and cause a great deal of amusement, concern and commotion 
This next bit I really like. You also must have an argument with the other half. The effect lasts between 10 to 15 seconds, after which the target calms down and apologises for his behaviour. Note, since women are never at fault, they never need to apologise. The men around her will. <laughs> I didn't write that at all. Somebody hacked the account. <laughs> I'm now go. going to blame uh, the newest player who's joined us, Casper. Well, I <laughs> I'm now getting it. Uh, sorry, Stuart. That was just funny. It tickled me. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, so there is only, there are a number of ways you can, of course, you can try braving these strange uh, gargoyles, which are firing bolts at you. Or you can take the obvious route which has been suggested by approaching via the gate uh, by foot you I... apparently you have a password if you wish to trust what you've researched and what the pirates say can we have spent um a number of hours actually just resting up in the in the the um, yes. ship just so that i can get the full power points and damage off me yes yeah, so if you want to clear yourself of any injuries uh, let me call up the combat tracker so you can check through that if you want to double check your PowerPoints, please do so. Make sure you've got all those. If you want to readjust your hit points, please do so as well. So you should be fully healed. Nobody should be damaged. So I'll take Cran's damage off. Quick question for uh, Vic, our new our new uh, character. Don't know him too well yet, but um, <laughs> so Vic, I've got a. An incredible sword. I'm not sure what weapons you're using. I see you've got remorse there. Cran smiles at that. Nice, uh, nice pick. Um, but the, this shield is also very, very good. If I'm unable to go in there and use my axe, which I can use with a pinch with the shield, I'll um, I'll be using the two-handed sword, in which case I won't be of any use to me. Uh, yeah. And you're probably the only other person who could really make use of it in combat. Uh, do you use one-handed weapons or not? He can do. Well. Um, so to meta game, John um, Chab's got the ability to use remorse quite nicely. He's also actually built up the ability to use one-handed, so Jizen's warhammer. That means he could take a shield as well if necessary. But it's like so the warhammer are both really useful. I, I would say the warhammer and and then combination with that shield are phenomenal. Again, in, in this very specific scenario. So um, I'll pass it over to you. I can see it. Yeah. And that's got everything. So plus thirty first in the lead, blood. So you can have a. Yeah, it's a shame. I'm I'm sacrificing fifty defensive bonus now to give that up. more than that actually. <laughs> so this is a question for you, Stuart. The my assumption was I can't. I have to use this seven foot sword two hand. It's kind of there's no getting around that, which would make a lot of sense. No, so. you, you're not strong enough to use it one. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Dimes. So that's why I'm giving giving up the. Uh, I need to do. I've skipped on shoulder and arm day. I need to get back in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Just before we rest here as well, I'd like to uh, wait for uh, Silk to start meditating, and then I want to cast Life Typing on her, which should give me the her race, which I'm most interested in, her age and current state of health. But the race and age is what I really want out of it. Oh, okay, really. Um... Okay, you can do that. <laughs> uh, I think, does she get a resistance? Or we first well, of all, um, yeah, give I me imagine. a casting roll. There you go. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to just gesticulate wildly because I imagine that would just wake her up. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> actually, I don't know. Uh, so she'll make a resistance roll. Ooh. That will have worked. Yeah, that will have worked. Okay, so you know that Silk is, uh, let me double check some of her background. Please say elf, not demon. Please say elf, not demon. <laughs> well, Silk is a wood elf. Uh, she is, uh, it tells her age. Yes. Yep, yep. She's 1,400 years old. <laughs> and the current state of health, which hopefully is going to be okay. Uh, she's healthy. Okay, thank you. We all breathe a sigh of relief if Agnon tells us that. Yeah, I will. Um, so a couple of other bits of prep we wanted to do before going in. Uh, one is to use the sword I have to cast Courage True. 
No. Sorry, it's not that. It's the Horn of Valhalla. So I'm going to sound it outside Way before before that, because uh, before we rest, I'm going to have to choose my two topics to think to dream about. Oh, yeah, that's the first thing. You're right, absolutely right. So dream two from Cherry. Okay, so I'll be using the deck of deck of cards to oh my tarot deck to um, concentrate before I go to bed on dream two, and I'll do a cast check. I get. You're trying to use your cards of prophecy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was a zero zero, but oh no. So you're using patience, fortune telling deck. Uh, yeah. future vision. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so twenty. That's fine. Okay, and you, you're using past future visions. Did you say? uh the from uh it's called dream two in the future visions yep, base skills. okay so dream one allows me to choose a two topic well a topic for this one allows me two topics uh to 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 gather a, a foretelling dream about i guess um or an informational dream hopefully um for what i'm looking at so i've got the two topics I want to choose because they're pretty rough and I'm guessing the dream will yeah. be pretty rough is uh, path of least resistance. For, so the concept behind path of least resistance is where is the least traveled areas in the island or channels around the island that we might be able to use? And the second topic is where 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 are the items that we're looking for we've got two items that we need and um and we want to be able to beeline towards okay. both of those as soon as possible okay so when you go to or you cast you play with play with the cards you lay out your cards yeah with those two questions in mind one question being effectively how can we safely move around in the city yeah that's fine uh, and the second question is where are the items for yep. Oscar, what two items are you looking for aha uh -huh. <laughs> let me, so let me items, I'm, I'm, you know I'm referring part? to the port. So the Ashling Stone. For, right? And the Ashling Stone and the rod is yep. that what the it was? The, the portal rod. Okay. So you get a view of, you get a feeling that while you walk within touching distance of the outer red wall you feel safe as soon as you move away from that red things begin to feel a little bit more different a little bit more dangerous okay um okay. you get a feeling that you are going to you can catch a vision of you are tired you are clearly injured and fatigued so you've had a fight or a battle but none of you are dead and you're not hurrying you're moving with weapons out and you can hear water all around you swirling and moving so you're surrounded or very close to moving water and a lot of it and you're underground and you come into a chamber which sees which seems to be full of crystals and two rods topped by crystals are lying askew amongst all the other crystals. They've clearly been hidden here. Those are the portal rods. Okay. Okay. The Ashling Stone, again, you see yourselves, you are picking your way through vegetation. You make your way up a cracked and crazed stone pathway and you head into the interior of building. The building is dominated by an enormous statue. 
then the vision jumps ahead as if you're moving somewhere else. Now you look as if you're rushing and hurrying. Clearly something is chasing you and you're running up some steps. Clutched in your hand, Bosco, is the mm. Ashling Stone, but you're looking over your shoulder. You're aware that you are struggling to get out quickly. Either some of you are badly injured or one of you is being carried, but you've come from an underground chamber and it was near some sort of large or maybe part of a large building that had an enormous statue. OK, so I'll share that as clearly as I can with everybody. So knowing that, when we did the high-level flyover and we're looking at some of the buildings, did we see any huge fact statues? I think you described one place, but I can't remember where it was now. No. No, there were no obvious huge statues. But of course, there are only a few buildings that could have a large statue. Most of the buildings, in fact, 99% of the buildings, have been left as ruined, flattened uh, walls. No roofs and, and or anything like that. So my thinking, guys, we head to the largest intact structure first then, and then if that big thing isn't there, then we'll head to the octagonal gazebo. Yeah. Um, um, which is very close by. They would be the most obvious ones. It could be one of ones on the island, but I don't know. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Not you, Bosco. Yep, so. Casper? So stick to the walls. <laughs> stick to the wall as far as we can to when they're traveling through. So kind of go straight through the gate and then basically just head straight west and keep going around the perimeter there. Yeah. Do we know what that is there? Is that like a lock? Oh, can't, can't draw it, but basically that blue line roughly across there. Does that look like we could cross on something there and go round? To the building, or would we have to go with kind of head this way? With difficulty, you could. It looks like some, or you imagine it would be some sea gate. Right. Okay. <clears throat> well, I mean, I'll look in awe at Cherry and go, that was extremely helpful. Never yeah, thought we'd yeah, get anything I'll, like I'll that. looking really impressed. You're not at all right, worried that she's sporting a new set of vampiric. Well, I'm, 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 I don't know if we'd actually know that that's evil. <laughs> No, you wouldn't. You will in a minute. Well, sorry, not in a minute. You will eventually. <laughs> though it wasn't that. It wasn't the Kagura room, though, wasn't it? Was it? Didn't it come from out of that? Yes, yes, it did. Yeah. Then so, again, I suppose the carpets weren't evil, so we we couldn't probably assume that. No. My, my no. recommendation is let's keep the uh, let's keep the hourglass well away from Cherry in about two months' time. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I'll then cast or blow the horn of Valhalla to activate Courage True for everyone, uh, cluster everyone together, which will basically give them a guaranteed resistance roll save against yeah. fear. Um, so your very first saving throw against fear is probably going to be a success. It's going to be a success. And after yeah. after that, um, make sure we've got some, some flasks of water, everyone, because uh, if, as we get fatigued, I will be able to use liquid in the flask to remove that, but also to give a massive bonus on the next resistance roll as well. Okay. So we'll save that as backup. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Cran, where are you sounding? Well, sorry, where are you winding the horn? Of... Not right near the gate, I would suggest, guys. No. I think it, it, as far as I remember, it doesn't have like a maximum duration. Um, it's like a, it's no. not like a, tw yeah, is it like, no, but you kind of you use it every, items. it's a once a day though. Isn't use it? it once a day. Yeah. Yeah. So you so basically make... once we wake up. Right. So you, so you, do you want to do this in the stockade or do you want to move towards the city? I was um, thinking we could do it while we're in the, if, if we're using the ship to come closer to the city to skip a lot of. Yeah, I think uh, we use the ship travel time. if we can. Like, we do it while we're in the air on the ship before we're coming down the land. Okay. Yeah, let so we, me... don't, we don't want the, anyone in the city to hear, basically. Okay, so let me give you that map of the island. Remember, that's Aaron Moore. 
And you can see the city Tarek Nev sort of in the center. The yep. stockade is down here. So the stockade is there. So you could fly your ship closer to the city. The bridge, sorry, the gate that you're going to come in is, as you look at that map, is just to the left-hand side. You know that those horrible uh, bolt things can hit anything within about 10 miles of the city should they choose to. So that's quite a range. And you can so see basically, is... by the time we get to the falling bridge, we'll need to... Yeah. There is a path, however. You can see there's a key that um, from the ocean all the way to the city. And there is a bridge that crosses over that, and it looks like a man-made canal. You, however, can choose to follow a path, which is obviously quite old. That will is that the Vare some... Passage? That's right. That can lead, so across on your right hand side, follow that. You can see, as you probably fly over it in your airship, you can see verdant vegetation across to the right. You can see uh, particularly thick forest. You can see the open farmland that used to be farmed were in more peaceful times by the Nuretti. There's still hints of what that must have looked like, though, of course, now it's been completely overgrown. Smouldering and um, lurking up in, towards the north, however, are these three huge volcanoes. One in particular, you know, is asleep. The other two are probably now dormant, totally dormant and probably extinct. But the largest of the three, which towers to a height of about 4,500 feet, um, still produces belches of smoke. And from time to time, there are very minor, there are very minor tremors which originate from the volcano. And you know that now, should your airship come within that sort of circular area around Tarek, it could be fired at. And should we be reading anything into the fact that it's called Mount Kadena after we learned a lot more about Kadena last week than before? I didn't even register that was important until just now. Is that you where read, she was thrown? <laughs> you can read in as much as know that Mount. You've had time to read some of the books. Um, so you would know that that as Mount Kadena by somebody. Hmm. And would we know that that bridge along the, the, the Vera Passage or Valor Passage uh, is known as a falling bridge? Yes. Yeah, Ugly wouldn't be too keen right. on taking a bridge called the falling bridge. <laughs> no, I think that's why. So if we can get put put a ground just, in, just on the west side of there. Okay. The, the other question I had, is the red gate the gate on the south of the detailed map, or is there a separate gate, i.e. like the locked no. gate or whatever? So on your Aaron Moore map, the coloured map, uh, the red gate is on the west. If you mm -hmm. then turn to the CC3 map, I've rotated that just oh, for okay. the sake of doing the map, and it's now on the, on the south as you approach it. Okay, so the... Okay, gotcha. So the canal kind of comes up from that way on the... Okay, yeah, your, yeah. So the okay. canal would be coming in the top, uh, from the left hand From the left-hand side, okay. So that's... Definitely. Now, that's, if that's west, that would be south. Sorry, right-hand side, wouldn't it? Right-hand side, yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. So that is... So yeah, we that will take us all the way. That path will take us all the way to the gate. So my suggestion is, guys, if you're okay, we get dropped off about there on the Aaron Moore map, just to the west of the Falling Bridge. If that's without out the te outside yep. the ten mile range, we no, you're not offering not any threat to Tarek Nev. So as you approach there, you can dimly see that the gargoyles are moving, but they don't fire at you. Cool. Okay. We're going to find out if they fire at things on the ground soon, aren't we? You I don't will. think Aroth told us that they did. They got all the way no. up to the gates, didn't they? No. The Those gargoyle guardians don't seem that worried if you approach via the gate. It's if you try and bypass the gate that they start getting excitable and firing at you. Okay. So your airship slowly descends, and with nerves jangling and with a cautious eye on the city wall, you can see glistening red 
in the early morning sun, your airship gently touches down um, in a small clearing that you've been fortunate enough to find, uh, just across on the west bank of the great man-made canal that eventually leads to Tarek Nev. There is a thick mist which is rising up from the jungle because of the dampness in the air and also in the ground, but it's a humid dampness which makes everything just a little bit sticky and a little bit uncomfortable. Already moisture is beginning to cling to the backs of your hands, cling to the back of your neck, and you're already beginning to bead up with sweat. The airship and your crew, and Shana as well, nod. Shana is far too stoic to show any concern, but you can see just by the tightness around the way that she grips the gunnels of your airship, that clearly she's not too happy to be leaving you. However, you've discussed matters with her and she given her struggles with sort of fighting demons, i.e. she's not a magical weapon. It's probably better to switch places with a likely crewman called Victor, who has been at pains to learn how to use remorse cran. And also, as chance would have it, is actually one of the few crew who's trained to use a war hammer. And you'll remember you've got three weapons which seem to have been specifically designed to defeat demons. Two, yeah, the war hammer, uh, two blades and a war hammer. So with your crew uh, back in place on the ship, the six of you are now landed and you can make your way up the path mile by mile towards the city. Walking up the path, you can see that it's, uh, and I've just shared that map with you, I hope, you can see that the jungle across the left is thick with vegetation and thick with animal life. Uh, glistening green and copper-colored snakes hang from almost every intact branch that you can see. Moisture drips from some of the leaves, but unpleasantly, it's a warm moisture. You can dimly see bright frogs huddled underneath the leaves. Some of them are moving around, getting in, catching the last insects before the sun begins to burn them to a crisp. You can also see a number of other larger bright shapes moving around distantly in the vegetation. But before long, you reach what looks like a stone archway. On the other side of the stone archway, you can see a large gap in the river. And you can see on the other side what looks like um, a gatehouse. Two low squat towers lie to the left and right. Single story, but they rise, they rise up slightly above the ground. What do you wish to do? Go back to sell Clan Reader book. <laughs> <laughs> Could do. Manage our okay. investments. <laughs> well, this is it. This is what we've trained for. Well, boys, good luck. <laughs> Says Jerry as he turns around and goes back. Yeah. I'll wait here. Yeah. Come back with that ring of flying. So the water that you can hear through the arc you can see that there are a set of what look like stone supports that perhaps at one point in happier days, if there have been happier days, supported an arched stone bridge. Now all that remains are four red pillars. There doesn't seem to be any demonic mouth or demonic face, which Arof Tikal warned of you. There's just a large opening in the thick stone wall, red stone wall, on the other side of the watery channel. The archway seems to be of a plain dark stone, not black like Gregora, just a dark stained stone and perfectly natural. As you pause, the jungle holds its breath. Ah, <laughs> um, okay, let's... Let's buckle up and do this, boy. Well, I was, I was thinking we, we could, except we seem to have been thwarted by the bridge being out. I think we should turn back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it, there's no bridge. Well, we tried. 
<laughs> yep, sorry. We gave, gave it a good student, I mean, it's, student attempt. Yep. Plan B, it's we just, we just, we just wait for the I other. Know. Sorry, go on, Casper. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I could just swim that. It's not that far. <laughs> I'm not sure what you'd be swimming in there to do the trip. Um, okay, so let's speak the name and see if that. Okay, off you go, Cherry. Where are you sitting, uh, standing squarely at the back? Cherry says, let's do this, but I'm just going to move further back before I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Cherry... Ready to in, take off at any stage. All right, stage. so Cherry, standing as you are, staring across at the arch and what looks like an opening, you call out, Terroglustrod. Oh, that's Silk, is And <laughs> Silk yes. thinks, oh, it's a portal. Um, <laughs> yes, nothing, <laughs> no. Nothing um, I'll move. I'll move up straight to there. Okay. Like, right Casper, you've looked at that gap and you thought, you know, it's surely we can swim across. Casper, give me yeah. a perception roll, please. Perception, okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, that's okay. So Casper, Casper walks under the archway, followed by the others. And as he does so, looking at the you can see a large red face begins to appear and form occupying all of the far bank. I won't try and draw it, but uh, if I just put a, a sketch on it. So a huge face forms, completely obscuring the other side. Didn't Aros Fran, say we had to like say the mm, word and then like walk across into its gob or something like that? Yeah, I think, big lad. You can hear Cran, a, 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 on. a Cran, sorry, uh, uh, across to your left, you can see what looks like uh, a golden object that sticks that is sticking out from water just to the left hand side of the gate kind of uh... that lump crown looks like almost a winged body it's submerged in the water how long it's been there you can't tell but you can see as the waves wash over the wing the wings move slightly but the figure hey, Okay, can you see down there? Still. It's like a like a wing figure under the surface of the water, but down there on the left. Oh yeah, just over that bit. Yeah. I'm just giving you a reception roll on the tower, Stuart. Yeah. You think as you step up as well, face appearing. You too think you can see what looks like one of these winged amarishi, these angelic-like beings. How long this poor unfortunate soul has lain, obviously caught on rocks in the water, you don't know. But clutched underneath one arm, there looks to be a large golden object of some description. Um, too slender to be um, a shield, but too large by the way the water is moving for it to be any sort of sword. Casper, your idea, sorry, uh, so your ideas of swimming across the water are changed as the demonic face appears. Huge teeth and a great big mouth begin to appear with huge bulging eyes. But also the water seems to be steaming and bubbling slightly as if it's very, very warm indeed. I'm sure that swimming in this water would be a good idea. You could get badly burnt. Jeez, the, I, uh, Jesus Christ, that face is beyond a temple. I know. That. <laughs> face of my mother. Good face luck. appears in front of you, and the eyes stare across, and the mouth turns into a sneer. And you can see two large fleshy lips open. And a rather nasty and horribly long tongue sticks out and the creature, the thing, lips, licks its lips and stares at you. The mouth opens, makes a slobbering noise and closes. But the grin is even yeah. more out. And can I just confirm, the Amarishi to the left, did you say that was a statue or remains? Looks like yeah. the remains of one of the Amarishi. Okay. But not decayed, not um, decomposing. Almost attack. Cran will go, right, 
Have you guys put on boys this out to I'm, me? The I'm, walk, I'm walking across the tongue. The tongue hasn't Wait actually up. stretched it actually across rolled yet. Out yet. Uh, I'm walking <laughs> up to the call gate. Um, oh, I thought we had done. Sorry. No. Before before this happens, have have Cran and Ugnan pointed out the Amarushan? Yeah, I, I, it was yeah. it yeah. was yeah. Yeah, or something. Yeah, okay. So I'll ask I'll ask Lisa if she's safe if it's safe enough for her to go down and see this the status of the Amarishi or whatever it's in if the Amarishi is dead bring back what it's if she, uh, if it, if she feels safe if she doesn't she doesn't have to no it's not safe Casper Lisa Lisa is um Bosco's sort of pet water elemental pet I'm, all right she is not a pet she is a totally she is, she is traveling with us of her own free will. Exactly. Grateful. Blinky the donkey got his pet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Wrong choice of words. she's my friend. Okay, so you've gathered at the entrance, and the fleshy face still looks at you and grins, but his eyes clearly are focused on you. They're not staring off into the distance. Whatever this thing is, it's quite sentient, but it's made no effort to communicate with you. It just looks hungry, I suppose. From time to time, a rather horrible bright red flicks out between horribly fleshy lips. And it makes a, just a disgusting smacking noise as it licks its lips hungrily, looking at you, almost tasting you. Well, let's get this done. Say the bloody name and let's get in there. My old man used to say there's no point putting something off if it's got to be done, no matter how unpleasant it is. Let's do it. You talk a lot, big man. You will taste very nice, I feel. Please, come closer. You see Kranz, Adam's apple bob up and down, but he stares resolutely at the demon. How sweat, tall's, be how... the sweat. Sorry, no, go on, go on, John. <laughs> he just sweat just trickles down his uh, right side of his brow. He doesn't wipe it away. How tall's Victor as a matter of interest? requires the sacrifice. <laughs> uh, Victor, don't don't kill yourself yet. You've joined. Uh, Victor, I guess, uh -huh. he's, probably, he's not as big as Cran. Okay. He's not as muscular. No, no way. I don't know about, probably a shade under six foot, perhaps. He's not as yeah. huge and hulking, but he's probably a little bit quicker. Okay, gotcha. Definitely. Right, well, and you can see there's a bit of a shaky uh, timber to uh, Ugland's voice. He's a little bit scared of going in here. I suppose whatever your dad says, big lad, go on then, say the name. Uh, or demand I passage. I can't fucking remember it. What, what is the name? Tell uh, Gustrod. What? No, that is not my name. It is not my name at all. Who are you that come to my gate and insult me? And We're the, the Iron now Wind. Grins. <laughs> um, quick, quick, sound the horn and leg it. Um, the creature begins to open its mouth wider only this time rather than showing its lips and its tongue as if it was hungry you can see rather large nasty pointed teeth the teeth look like they've been filed to points and each tooth looks to be about the size and length of um, a large two-handed sword the creature is now beginning to frown and looks angry Toblerone. <laughs> We need a safe word. Is there, is there a safe word if we go in here? <laughs> yes, nutmeg. As long as you whisper okay. nutmeg, you will be nutmeg. teleported. <laughs> same. So, so you've clearly got to remember the name correctly. Fuck, and, every every time, the and every time you get the name wrong, it gets angrier. That face, oh, as, can, you all, can you all give me perception, please? A number of you are aware given your proximity, those are all quite good roles. Um, 
that the way the mouth is distorting and moving, should it choose to want to bite at you or snap at you, that face could probably elongate quite easily and bite you, even though you're about 20 or 30 feet away from where the face is manifested. But obviously, yeah, I was I was expecting an extendable tongue of some sort. As well, if you get well, so I, I've been obviously mad that creature's name, and the creature took great offence to this. Oh fuck! I, did we actually? Excuse my language. Did we actually write down this name properly? Anyway, I've just gone back to the first time we met Aroth, which was in Chapter Three, Part One, and I thought it told us what it is then. He did. Yeah, he told us so Aroth yesterday. Con- so yeah, Aroth confirmed the name that you thought that you'd read in a book. So I can't find it somewhere. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, typical Logan style. Then he just sits down and gets his uh, backpack out and starts leafing through the book. It's bloody in here somewhere. I know. I thought it was that, but hang on a second. Okay, so Ugnan, you can give me a memory. Where the hell did I see that name? That is hilarious. Sorry, this is the biggest bit of preparation we needed, and we didn't make yeah. it. So. Okay, ninety-six. <laughs> okay, give me another memory roll, please. As long as you roll under the ninety-six, you'll be able to get to the page. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, <kid>, oh. <laughs> So open go through the book to go. Shit, it's here somewhere, and the rest is standing around going, okay. Talk about yourselves. So, so I, I've got oh. it. I've got it. Oh no, hang on. No, no. <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm going to while while that's happening. I'm going to go over to the area. So that's to the right. Did you say or the left? Where the ash? The ash. left. You think across to the left. You can see an Amarishi. Yeah, is on our side of the bank or there? So his side. So the Amarishi that you can see. Let me get. Give... Poking over so you can see uh, exactly where it is. It's Taraglustrod. Where was that? Okay. So give it's me spelt a... like this. Sorry. I'll just type it into the Yeah, yeah do that. Where did you find that, John? It's in my write up. Tarak never surrounded by Dominic Moore with a single gate tower. They discovered that the password is Taraglustrod. Well, is that in situation that report was... fucking dire? <laughs> no, 20... <laughs> uh, situation report 25. That one was pre okay. fucking dire. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me draw a little circle because that, that dragon, that token didn't quite work. So the Amarishi that you're looking for is kind of over here, just on the far side, about 30 feet away from you. 30 feet. Uh, That's okay. How far right. does my whip extend? Uh, probably about that far. Cran, give me a memory roll. <laughs> This would be great if you get that. As I'm thumbing through it. They're, 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 they're ponderous. Okay. Cran's um, memory is the worst of his abilities. Give me another roll, please. See if you can get under that. You might remember something about the name that you're looking for. Never going to hear the end of this. Never going to hear the end of this. Ooh. So close. What did I say? Terror- well, I don't think- know. It didn't sound like that. Terraglutrod. Could, could have been is that a, is it Terraglustrod? Terraglustrod. It doesn't have an umlaut on it, so. Terraglustrod. Terraglustrod. Okay. So okay. You think it was Terra rather than what? Tara. Tara, rather than what Ugden said. Which of you wants to try and pronounce that name again? I'll give it a go. Yeah, that'd be great. Just for the role playing, it's like he's flip. Uh, Ugden's flipping through the book, kind of like shush, shush, lad. I'm not nearly got it. Nearly got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! It is Toblerone. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> the safe word is Omaha. Okay, so if we, everyone if it all goes, to... so uh, it is. I believe it. Uh, it's Terra Glustrod. Hmm. This is very disappointing, but as commanded, so it shall be. And the creature's mouth opens and opens and opens in the same way that you've seen the snake's mouth, a snake's jaws dislocate. And a huge red fleshy tongue rolls out and slaps on the stones, not more than a few feet from you. The tongue pulses slightly, 
but the mouth opens to reveal what looks like a dark red hole with just a hint of light on the other side. From what Fucking you've been told, <laughs> all you do now is walk onto the tongue and you're not sure. The book hints that you're almost magicked, teleported onto the other side. You hear Cran mutter, fucking hell, I've been into bad one night stands in my time, but this has got to be the worst before he stumbles onto the bridge. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Likewise. Okay. Yeah, Ugla's not going to hold it. He's going to go as quickly as possible. Come on, girls. I can't call Newman Ugla. Wait up, wait up, wait up, wait up. Come on, girls. Oh, it's it's Ugla Tari. Okay, let me just clear some of that mask for you. So the city kind of opens up in front of you as you step over. Unfortunately, Cherry, as you hit the tongue, basically you arrive here. It is impossible to go back once you are here. So Cran and Victor kind of appear there. When you look back, there is no way out of the city. Everything sort of from, let me draw another square. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Everything from about here is just a red chasm. So if you stepped into this bit here, which is this sort of red, hazy opening, you'd probably end up back over here on the other side of the river. OK. Where's Cherry gone? So. Ah, oh, she's back again. <laughs> All right. OK. Swift, Swift so, march west. Oh, and that's where we're going to leave it. Just as we enter this demon and ghost infested city, who knows what we're going to find there? I imagine demons and ghosts probably, but um, we'll see what how it all pans out. A little bit scary for our characters. Brought them up this far. Don't want to get wiped out in the city. Never know. Anyway, thanks very much for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for seeing us in all the different media forms that we deal with. Uh, drop us a like, like all this stuff, all that kind of things. But catch you next time. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>